Good morning, good morning, good morning, Hotspot family. Thank you so much for tuning in with us again. My name is Davina, and on behalf of our pastors, Andrew and Miley Tolina, we want to greet you in the name of Jesus and welcome you here to the Hotspot Church. Our vision is connected to God's word to see people live their best life. Now, how many are excited for the word today? If you are a man, press that heart emoji because I'm excited to hear what God has brought to Pastor Andrew himself. But before we get into it, how many of you guys enjoyed last week's message? Come on, if you enjoyed last week's message, put it in the chat, say, I did, amen. Press the heart emoji because last week's word was entitled, How to Rebuild when people call you crazy. Now, Pastors Andrew and Miley say that 2021 is the year of re here at the Hotspot Church. And last week he gave four tips on how to rebuild when people call you crazy. He gave four words. So we're gonna recap it while we go through our announcements for today. One of the words that he gave was the word re-engage. And he said, if we are going to rebuild this year, we have to re-engage. So we want to encourage you guys to re-engage with our life groups here at the Hotspot Church. You're probably wondering, man, why do they always push so hard for us to join a life group? Because here at the Hotspot, we truly believe that life is better together. So we have two life groups kicking back off um, this week. The first one is our women's life group led by our very own pastor, Miley. This life group is kicking off on Tuesday, January 12th at 6.30 p.m. via Zoom. And ladies, if you are currently connected with this life group, man, can you guys tap that heart button? Because man, I've heard great things about this life group. My mom is a part of this life group. And man, I love seeing her. Like she always makes sure she's like 630. I have my Zoom call 630 and she sets that time aside for her life group. So ladies, if you want to get connected with this life group, um, put it in the chat, say women and we will get you the information needed. Amen. The next life group that is kicking off this week is our men's life group led by Pastor Andrew himself. This life group is kicking off on Wednesday, January 13th at 6.30 p.m. Men, if you want to get connected with this life group, simply um, write men in the chat. We will get that information to you as well. Also, if you would like all information um, regarding all of our life groups we have here at the um, Hotspot Church, just visit our website at thehotspot.church. Another word that Pastor Andrew brought up last week was the word reignite, which simply means to catch fire again. And something that always reignites my faith every week is none other than Pastor Miley's blog that you can find on her website at askmy.com. Here at the hotspot, every Friday is Girlfriend Friday. And this past week, her blog was entitled, was entitled Love Isn't Fair. So you can check that out on askmy.com and you can find a brand new blog every week on askmy.com. Speaking of reigniting people's faith, one way um, that reignites my faith is hearing of the goodness of God in other people's lives through testimonies. And Hotspot family, we want to encourage you, if you have a testimony that you would like to share to help edify the body of Christ, man, send us a message, let us know, or type it in the chat, say God is good, and we will reach out to you. We will reach out to you as well, but I just have a quick testimony to share with you. Um, this past week, I went to the doctors to get my labs and have a doctor's appointment. And man, God is good. My platelet count is finally in the normal range again. The last time it was in this range was exactly a year ago, man. And God has been good. I will tell you that journey. It's not easy for me. It's a mental um, battle um, where I'm just like, man, God, I don't know what else to do because with this situation, I can't do anything but give it to God. Amen. But man, God is good and he is faithful. And man, this is what I love about God. What he does for me, man, he can do it for you too. Amen. So if you have a testimony that you would like to share again, send us a message or type it in the chat, say God is good and we will reach out to you. Amen. Amen. Now, another word that Pastor Andrew said was reimagine. And I love the definition. He said it simply means to reinterpret or to rethink an event. And today I want to um, challenge us to reimagine 
our giving. Amen. So the ways to give will be shown on the screen. And if you haven't already, um, last week we wrote down our seeds on a piece of paper. If you have that handy, you know, pull it out. Um, if you don't, you know, grab it. If you didn't just name your seeds, because we truly believe that here at the Hotspot Church. But real quickly, man, it's the year of re. And here we call our seed, we refer to our giving as, as a seed, okay? And I want to tell you something. I want to share with you the power of release, okay? So a seed, it has special requirements in order for it to grow, right? It needs to be planted. It needs water. It needs to be given sunlight, all of that, right? But here's the thing with us. When we have our seeds, we like to hold on to it like this, okay? In order for the seed to grow, right, it has the requirements, but the first thing that needs to happen is it needs to be released. But the thing is for us, a lot of the times we have a trouble releasing because we think that the seed is too big, right? We think that the amount is too big or we fear of not having enough, okay? But can I tell you that there's power in release? Because look, when you release it, right, it repositions you it repositions you now where you are able to water your seed. It repositions you to where you are able to worship and it gives, it gives, creates the perfect atmosphere for your seed to grow and to flourish. And guess what? When, when you release, it also repos repositions you to experience God's gift of receiving. Amen. And here's the thing about God, man, when you, when you release it opens up the opportunity for God to bless you. And when God blesses you, guess what? He does so in a way that you don't just have enough, but you have more than enough. Amen. So I want to encourage you guys, man. I want to give you um, these verses, 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 7 and 8 and 10. In the New Living Translation, it says, You must decide in your heart how much to give. And don't give reluctantly or in response to pressure. For God loves a person who gives cheerfully and God will generously provide all you need. Man, let me read that again. And God will generously provide all you need. Then you will always have everything you need and get this, and plenty left over. Plenty left over to share with others. Verse 10, for God is the one who provides seed for the farmer, then bread to eat. In the same way, he will provide and increase your resources and then produce a great harvest of generosity in you. Amen. I don't know about you, but I received that over my life for this year in 2021. Man, and I want to encourage you guys, there's power in your release. So right now we're going to take this time. Man, take this time to pray over your seeds with your family. Come together as one right there in your living room. Take this time, pray with your family, and we will see you in a quick minute. Hallelujah.
Father Lord, we just continue to say thank you. Thank you for the many resources that you have blessed us with. Thank you for the resources that you just continue to bestow upon us, Father Lord. 2021, Lord, this is the year where we honor you, Father Lord, with our giving, with our offering. We continue to say thank you. We give you all the glory, honor, and praise. We water our seeds today. Father Lord, we declare and decree that 2021 will be our best year yet, and we are sticking with you. We are going to work your principles, Father Lord. We love you so much. If you believe in that prayer, repeat after me. Say, seed, go and grow. Harvest, I will see you real soon. Say, time, hurry up and catch up with my harvest. In Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The last word that Pastor Andrew used last week was the word rejoice. And it simply means to take delight in. Man, one of my favorite verses is 1 Thessalonians 5, 16. And it simply says rejoice always. I want to encourage you guys today, man, to take delight in God's presence. Take delight in his love and his goodness and take delight in who he is. Hallelujah. We want to encourage you to worship with us today and remember to rejoice always. All right. Well, I'm going to continue to say welcome to everyone. Welcome, welcome uh, to the Hotspot Church family. Great and blessed morning to us all. And so, like I said, maybe it's afternoon where you're at, or if you're far away, like Sarah in Finland, good evening and welcome to our second Sunday of 2021. Uh, my Bible says, this is the day that our Lord has made and we should rejoice and be glad in it. Amen, everyone. So, uh, man, look at your name and say, we made it to the second Sunday of 2021 in Jesus name. And also, I want to say this. Um, Congrats to Sarah, uh, their second game of 2021. Uh, it was a big win for their team. Uh, beat, they, they beat the number one team, you guys, in their league. And so way to put in work, Jay. Uh, man, you know, they were, they, were down by, uh, they were down two, Sarah's team, in regulations um, with two seconds left. Sarah got the ball. She made the bucket, tied the score. And then in overtime, she made the free throw and they won by one. So, man, way, way, way to go, Sarah. And uh, just want to change things to a little bit here. For, for high school sports here in Washington, I believe the target date uh, to play is, was it, Miley, February 1st. And, and I hope, you guys, I hope it does stay on target with that date because I can't wait to watch our, our youth and our kids play. Uh, they put in the work. And, yes, I, I know about, you know, staying safe too but you know it's, i just can't wait and hopefully it, it you know it stays there with february 1st so that we can all go and you know hopefully they'll let us go and, and cheer our, our kids on in jesus name but in the meantime it will say in the meantime okay i want to say to all of our youth and children that is doing online schooling man look keep it up man keep it up and i i know it's easier said than done but push through okay push through you know, I had to encourage our youngest, Kendall, about finishing strong too, you guys. I understand it gets boring and it's so easy to get off track, but youth and children, man, push through, okay? Our imagination, um, what do you call it? I mean, influence, impact, all you guys, man, push through. We're, we're, we're praying for you, okay? We're praying for you as well as your parents. Parents, you're doing a phenomenal job too, so keep up the great work. Um, and if maybe the grandparents are helping the kids too, uh, job well done or maybe uncle and auntie man thank you guys thank you so much in jesus name amen amen everyone all right so um if you were here last week we, we uh it was our first sunday and what i did was we pr i prayed over our church and usually we have you know the oil wheel to anoint our our church um members and so we received the tubes you know to put the oil to give you know to the families but what we found out you guys my name me and Miley found out that some of the, the tubes or the capsules, uh, it, it leaks. So uh, what we were planning to do to mail it to people. So what we're doing right now is we're waiting for these other tubes or other capsules to come in that has a better cap, you know, so that we, we can mail it and, and hopefully not leak. 
But what we also want to, maybe we thought about, um, like for example, if you live in Tacoma, like I said, maybe to help us out, um, we're just going to say if you can meet us at a certain place um, and then we'll just give this to you, you know. And like for example in Kent, maybe we can meet at um, Kent Meridian High School parking lot and then we can just give you uh, this oil that we prayed over, you know, in Jesus' name because it's the anointing that removes burdens and it destroys the yoke. Okay, amen everyone? In Jesus' name. Hallelujah, hallelujah. So uh, again, Thank you guys for tuning in. And if you missed last week's Sunday service and the lesson, you know, and the lesson, what you can do is you can go back into our Facebook video archives to watch it. And so I thank God for our face, uh, what do you call our media team to making sure that, you know, we give the spirit of excellence. We're still trying to better ourselves. And, and so hopefully, you know, you can be patient with us. I believe, you know, if you go back and watch it too, it'll be a blessing to you and your family. Okay. It's the year of re and I don't know about you, but by, by having that awareness of re it, it man brings so much words like, you know, readjust, you know, or reclaim, you know, or recover, um, rejuvenate and all that stuff. So it is the year of re everyone in Jesus name. Amen. Now, if you are ready to get into this word, like I am, uh, man, press that emoji like what Davino is mentioning and let's go to work and say, yeah, I'm, I'm ready. I'm ready. Okay. Amen. So, so let's pray. And then so we, so that we can get, get to work. So Father, we want to stop again. Just want to say thank you. Thank you so much for today. Thank you for your love and your mercy. Thank you for your grace. But most of all, Father, just thank you for who you are, the great I am. I thank you, Lord, for being our source and for, re for providing us with our resources. I thank you, Lord, that 2021, Lord, we, we, we stand with you, Lord, and we reclaim the position that you've had for us. That, Lord, that this, this year, Lord, is the year that we can continue to rejoice because you are faithful to us. I pray, Lord, that you help, help me to hide behind your cross and you speak today, Lord, like never before, that this word will fall on great grounds and produce great fruits. We love you in Jesus' name. And everyone say, Amen and amen. Amen, amen. All right. So last week, right, if you can recall in, um, in Micah chapter 6, verse 8. Yeah, remember that? Micah chapter 6, verse 8. Uh, just a, so let me, let me just bring this back to you. The, the Bible says, but he's already, right, already made it plain how to live, what to do, and what God is looking for, right, in men and in women is quite simple, right? Do what is fair and just to your neighbor, okay? Say that with me. Say, do what is fair and just to your neighbor. Now, if you can, underline that word neighbor, okay, because I'm going to highlight that a little bit more today. And the Bible says, be what? Come compassionate and loyal, what? In your love. Then the Bible says, and don't take yourself too seriously, but take who seriously? Take God seriously. Amen. Um, so let, let me let me just say this. I am definitely 100 percent sure that we all, all of us, okay, everybody have asked God one time or another to help us. Right. Come on. Raise your hand if you, if you know what I'm talking about. Whether there was a need, you know, like uh, for finance, for food, uh, for health, uh, a job, a career or school. And the list goes on. Right. Amen. And, and um, but I'm, I'm not saying this house about that it's a bad thing to ask God for help. As a matter of fact, just this past week, I asked God to help us with our country that is messed up right now. And we definitely need his guidance and help. Amen. But let me ask you a question now. Let me ask you a question. OK, and maybe and maybe you might think this is a dumb question. All right, here it is. But. Have you ever asked God if he needed help? Okay, that's the question. Have you ever asked God if he needed help? Oh, come on, Andrew, right? Really? God Almighty needs help? Yes, our God, Yahweh, our source, God Almighty, um, our creator, a sovereignty God. And yes, who doesn't need our input to do things, right? Because he's God all by himself. 
But which leads me to our title for today's message, everyone. Today's message is, is um, entitled, Answer the Call. All right? Look at your neighbor and say, Answer the Call. Or maybe to, be, uh, to better understand the title, maybe we can put it into a question, this title. If God needs help, okay, here's, the, here's put in the question. Will you answer the call? All right? Will you answer the call? Now, let's go to Ecclesiastes chapter 5, verse 18 to 20 in the Message Bible. Ecclesiastes chapter 5, verse 18 to 20 in the Message Bible. And the Bible says this. After looking, okay, after looking at the way things are on this earth, here's what I've decided. The best way to live is take care of yourself, right? Take care of what? Take care of yourself. Have a good time. And make the most of whatever job or whatever assignment you have as long as God, what, everyone, gives you life, right? And that's about it. <laughs> that's the human lot. Yes, we should make the most. Okay, we should, what, everyone? Make the most of what God gives, both the bounty and and the capacity to enjoy it, okay? Someone say to enjoy it. Accepting what God's, I mean, what's given and delighting in the work or the assignment that we're doing. It's God's gift, everyone, okay? It's what? It is God's gift. God deals out joy in the present, the now, and it is useless, everyone, to brood over how long we might live. All right, so can I get your attention, everyone? All right. According to Solomon, that what we just read um, in Ecclesiastes chapter 5, that God wants us to not only live our best life, right? Okay, to live our, what, our, our best life, but also to enjoy life. Now, you're probably saying, and that's easy for you to say, but Andrew, how can I enjoy life with all that is going on with COVID? And this past week, you probably have seen on the news and on social media what has happened, you know, uh, at the U.S. Capitol and also in the state of Washington, right? And I do know, and I do know, come on, you guys, I do know that our country needs Jesus. Our country needs help. Our country needs God. But how can our country experience God's love when there's so much turmoil, right? Is there hope for our country? And here's my answer. Yes, there is still hope. Come on, somebody. There is still hope. Now, it might be a tall order, everyone, to tackle. And you might be saying, what can I do when God needs help, right? I'm not a pastor or a deacon. I'm not even a leader in the church. I don't know that much scriptures in the Bible. I don't even know where Genesis is, right? <laughs> right? Besides, what am I able to do? Because what am I able to do probably won't even put a dent on the problem we're facing but how about so i ask you again have you tried to ask god or ask god like does he need any help maybe this can help us with with you know what we're gonna go into with with that question go go me to matthew chapter 22 in Math, uh, matthew chapter 22 answer the call okay answer the call now, I don't know about you, man, but before, man, when, uh, when the bill collectors to call my house, I didn't want to answer the call. Come on. Come on, don't act like you know, you know what I'm talking about. I didn't want to answer the call. And, and, man, from past experience, for some reason, they always call you when you're about to eat. Yeah? You remember? Come on, come on, right? Come on, they're about to eat. And then now your food don't taste good. But, but today, answer the call, right? In, in Matthew chapter 22, let's go to Matthew chapter 22. It's, it's a story about, um, so let, let me, so you can understand where, where, what the story is all about. It's a story about the Pharisees. Um, and they, they, what they did is they agreed to come together. And, and one of them was an expert in the law. And this expert asked Jesus a question. This is the question he asked Jesus. He said, teacher, which is the greatest commandment in the law? That was his question. He said, teacher, which is the greatest commandment in the law? Now, in verse 37, now that's where we're going to go now. In verse 37, Jesus answers his question. All right, and he says, this is Jesus. Jesus replied, love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. 
38 says, this is the first and greatest command. This is what Jesus said. This is the what, everyone? The first and greatest commandment, which means there is nothing above that, everyone. It's the greatest period. You with me? Now, Jesus did not only answer the expert's question, but what Jesus did, he took it a step further. In verse 39, Jesus says this, and the second is like it. Okay, and the what, everyone? And the second is like it. It says, love your neighbor. Do you remember in Micah chapter 6, I told you to underline that word neighbor, right? Just and fair to your neighbor. And the second is like it. What does it say? Love your neighbor as yourself. Which means, everyone, okay, the second commandment, love your neighbor, is just as great as the first. And that's to what, everyone? Love the Lord with all your heart, mind, and soul, right? Now, if you attended our GLOW class, our GLOW class, and I, I, I want to encourage everyone, um, if you haven't been, you know, to our GLOW to sign up to attend this class when it comes up again, okay? It's a free class, everyone, so you don't have to pay anything. Um, but if you act now, there's a, no, I'm just joking. Okay, uh, just five sessions. It says five, uh, five sessions, and we go more in depth with this, you know, this, this uh, lesson with GLOW. But if you, if you attended our GLOW class, you should know that there are over 600 commandments in the Bible, over 600. Okay, could you imagine trying to remember or memorize over 600 commandments. Man, there's a lot of believers. Today, we still don't even know all 10 commandments, right? So <clears throat> let, me, let me just bring us back to the story. Jesus was asked to reduce everything in the Bible into one command. And he said, love God with everything you have and love your neighbor as yourself. Jesus said that, in, in, I mean, he also said in verse 40, all the law, okay, all 600 plus um, commandments and the prophets hang, okay, on these, what, two commandments, okay? So, so, so let's go back to uh, 37, you guys, verse 37. Jesus replied, love the Lord your God with what? All your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. Jesus said this, this is the, the first and greatest commandment, right? So here's, here's the question. Here's the question for us. What does it mean, you guys? What, what does it mean to love your God with all your heart, mind, and soul? That's the question. What does it mean? Because for many believers, it's hard, right, to give a clear answer to this question because everyone will have all kinds of answers. And I, I think one of the problems uh, that the church have, and, and not the building, but the church, which is you and I, God's people, has put on ourselves is that we have turned this simple idea to just a nice and cute saying. Come on, everyone, love God with all your heart. Bless the Lord, right? It's just, it's just now it's just a cute saying. We have, you know, we have t-shirts that say it. We have coffee mugs that say it. We have um, our screensaver. You know, um, we have it on our phone. We have, you know, we've created songs with lyrics that say it. And we go on and on with our lives. Watch this. Without actually putting this command into practice. Jesus said, I come that you may have life. You've heard me say this before. This is in John 10, 10. You don't have to go, just write this down. I come that you may have life and have life, what? More abundantly. You see, when Jesus said, I give you life, that's eternal life, everyone. That's everlasting life. It's when you receive and accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. That's the life that Jesus gives and offers to everyone. John 3, 16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever, right, believeth in him should not, what, perish, but have everlasting life. How about as believers, we have everlasting life, but not too many are experiencing what Jesus said, the abundant life. Okay, come on, right, in John 10, 10, because they have not answered the call. What do you mean, Andrew? And be, see, because, okay, because you've accepted Jesus Christ into your life, Believers feel, okay, here's what believers, a lot of believers feel, that if I just go to church now, if I pray more, 
if I praise him more or worship him more, or maybe if I act holy, I am demonstrating that I love God with all my heart, mind, and soul, right? Come on, amen, someone? But what if I was to tell you that going to church, praying, praising, and worshiping him is you, everyone, ministering unto the Lord. That's you ministering unto the Lord. What do you mean, Andrew? Okay, to minister to the Lord means to draw near to God, to worship him, and to bring him joy and pleasure. Ministering unto God is to tell him of his goodness, everyone. And, and as you minister unto the Lord, everyone, you also have to know how to minister unto the people. Watch this, Kate. Ready? About him. Ministering unto the people about him. In other words, write this down. If you're taking down notes, write this down. Your love for God. Remember that one, we, 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 the greatest commandment? Your love for God with all your heart, mind, and soul will be demonstrated by how you love your neighbor. Your love for God, you know, I love the Lord all my heart, mind, and soul. It will be demonstrated by how you love your neighbor. Come on, go with me, go, go with me now to Matthew chapter 5, verse 43 to 48. And this is Jesus talking. Matthew chapter 5, verse 43 to 48. So what did I say? Your, your love for God will be what? Will be what, everyone? Okay, will be demonstrated by what? By how you love your neighbor. Come on, come on, right? The, the Bible even says this. He says, how can you love God whom you don't see, but yet you hate your brothers and your sisters that you do see? Come on, amen? So your love for God will be demonstrated by how you love your, your neighbor. Come on, amen? So Matthew chapter 5, verse 43 to 48, and this is Jesus talking. In verse 43, he says, you have heard that it was said, what? Love your neighbor and what? Ooh, and yuck, kill your enemy, right? <laughs> and hate your enemy, right? Verse 44, this is still Jesus talking. He says, but I tell you, he takes it up a notch now. Love your enemies and pray for those who only love you, right? No, it's not what the Bible says. It says, pray for those who persecute you. Now that right there, let me, let me just stop the, right there real quick. That's hard for many believers because the only time, the only thing that we pray for is what? Our family, our loved ones, right? And those we like and so forth in our church. Hopefully you pray for your pastor and the pastor's family. But, but anyways, but Jesus said, he says, you have heard, right? You have heard to what? Love your what? Neighbor and hate your enemies. And now Jesus turns it around. He says, now let me tell you something. Love your enemies and pray for those who what? persecute you. Man, I'm telling you because forgiveness is for everyone. Verse 45, okay, let's jump down to verse 45. He says that that you may be children of your father, right? In where? Heaven. He causes his son to rise on the evil and the good and sends rain on the what? Righteous and the unrighteous. 46, he says if, watch this everyone, if you love those who love you, what reward would you get? <laughs> Let's think about that. If you just love those who love you, what reward would you get? Nudge your neighbor say, answer the call. Come on, amen? Are not even the, what, tax collectors doing that? Verse 47 says, and if you greet only your, what, your own people, what are you, what, doing more than others. Don't even the pagans do that? 49 says, be perfect. That word perfect simply means to be mature, to grow, to be complete. Therefore, as your heavenly father is perfect. Amen. So the help that God needs, okay, the help that God needs. What if you and I had the solution, everyone? What if the solution was attainable? What if you chose to answer the call and to help God? What if to show that your love for God was to love your neighbor? Think about it, everyone. Because the hope of this country, I'm, I'm, let me just say it like this. The hope of this country is not going to come through our political party or through our government 
or through a donkey or an elephant or getting more people to go to church, everyone. The hope for our country is only through the plan of salvation through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. The answer, everyone, lies with us, the ones we see in the mirror. God needs help, but will you answer the call? Because it's within our power to fulfill God's purpose, everyone. Scripture says this in Proverbs chapter 19, many are the plans in a person's heart, but it's the Lord's purpose, everyone, that prevails. We, the church, have the answer, everyone. Come on, we, the church, have the hope that our country needs, that our state needs, that our city needs, that our community needs. And let me get even closer. We have the hope and answer that our neighbor needs, everyone. And that answer and hope is Jesus. Come on, someone say Jesus. Amen. Jesus said, upon this rock, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it, everyone. It's the Lord's purpose that will prevail against any evil tactics and the devil's trying to throw our way. But my question is, will you answer the call? You see, Hotspot, loving God means loving people. Loving God means loving people. Even the people, come on, man, that do you wrong. Even the people that gets on your nerves. Loving God means loving people. To Come on, amen? Amen, everyone? To take care for the people around us and to be cared for by the people around us, it's the best way to live, everyone. Think about it. I want you to think about it. Think about it. I know I've been asking you this question, but I want to get this into your spirit. What if we were to take this plan, the greatest commandment that Jesus said, and put it into action? Come on, I want you to reimagine this thing, some, some possibilities. This, I mean, I'm talking about despite what we see on the news and on social media, and you might be saying, man, there's, there's, there's just too much, Andrew. We can't help everyone. But watch this. But if you was to help just one person, it will mean a lot to that one and that one you answered the call to. Come on, amen? The one that God needed your help to reach. I know you may not be able to reach like thousands, but can you start off with one? Amen? Come on, amen, someone? And, and let, let me check these thoughts that might have crossed your mind. Maybe our thoughts we're, we're, we're saying to ourselves is, Andrew, maybe let someone else do it. I'm already busy with things in my life. And besides, I'm trying to get myself in order, right? Come on. This past week, I said to God, this, this is me when I was talking to God this past week. I said, Lord, if there's any area in my life that I have lost the passion to serve you, please help me to fulfill it again. This is the year of re, to refill me again. Or to recharge me again. That's that's one of the things I ask God. I said, if there's any area in my life that I've lost my passion, that you've assigned me to do, fill me up again. And maybe that's what you need to do. Maybe you need to just ask God, whatever area that you assign me, I want to answer the call. Because listen, you may have the first life. What Jesus is talking about, you may have you may have life, but I really know that God wants you to experience the life more abundantly. In Jesus' name, amen. I've heard people you know, that say that 2020 was, was a bad year, and, and, and rightfully so. But there are other people that came up to me saying, man, do you know, Andrew, that 2021 was one of my best years? And, 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 and this is what I told them. I said, I believe the reason why it's one of your best years is because you remained in the Word of God. You know, you remain steadfast with the word. And, and so I'm not saying that you are bad, maybe because you're bad because you didn't remain. No, I'm just saying that these people had just this whole different outlook in Jesus' name. Are you with me? Look at the name and say, answer the call. Come on, turn to your name and say, answer the call. Okay, Galatians chapter 5, verse 13 and 14 says this. All right, maybe this is another thought that maybe that, that, might, uh, that you might uh, cross your mind. Galatians chapter 5 verse 13 to 14. It says, you, my brothers and sisters, were called to be what? Free. But do not use your freedom to indulge what the flesh, right? Rather, what's the next words? The serve 
one another humbly in, in love, right? Is that what your Bible says? And then it says in verse 14, this is in Galatians now, for the entire law is fulfilled in keeping this one command. Love your what? Neighbor as yourself, right? So here's the question again. Here's another question I want to ask. I know I've been asking a lot of questions. I always like to ask questions. Hot spot. Okay, let's go back. Let's go back to uh, verse 14 again. For the entire law is to is what? Is fulfilled in keeping this one command, right? Love your neighbor as yourself. So here's my question. Hot spot. Do you love yourself? Do you know what it means to love yourself? Because if, if not, maybe you need to start there. Come on, and, and start loving yourself. Hallelujah, someone. Let, let me tell you something. I love me some, Andrew. <laughs> I ain't going to lie. I love me some, Andrew. Flaws and all. I don't care what you think. I love me some, Andrew. You know, you, listen, I think for many of us, when we look in the mirror, we tend to look at what's not good, right? We, we look at all the flaws and we complain about this and that. Man, come on. Some of you, you had a chisel chest and now it looks like a treasure chest, right? Ladies, you used to have Twin Peaks and now it's Harley Peaking. Come on, you, you're, you're depressed because of the love handles that you see. You know, come on, listen, just stop. Come on, just stop, stop, stop all that mess. Stop that. Come on. And start to love all of you. Love handles and all. Come on, amen, someone? Hallelujah, somebody? Come on, look at them and say, answer the call. Because watch, because if you don't know how to love yourself, how can you answer the call to love your neighbor? So let me encourage you. God created a masterpiece when he created you. Let me just remind you. I love you. Come on. He created a masterpiece when he created you. Romans chapter 13 verse 10 says this. And I'm coming to a close here. Love does no harm to a neighbor. What? What did it say? Love does no harm to a neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfillment of the law. Our country needs love. Our country needs the love of Christ. And it's going to only going to come through us. Come on, amen, someone? And, and, and let, let me just say this, you guys. Um, th uh, let, let me just say this. I, I want to ask this question, okay? Because maybe you, you probably asked this question. Andrew, who is my neighbor, right? Who is my neighbor? Well, it's simple, everyone. Most times you think the neighbor is the one that you just like, and maybe that's what that God called me to. But here's, here, let me just say this. Who is my neighbor? And like I said, I'm coming to a close. It's the people that I live next to. It's my next door neighbor. It's people that I sit next to in church. I know that house by church, there's many of you that you come to church and hopefully we're going to get to come to church again, right? Um, and you see people just come in and out, right? And all you say is, hey, hey, yeah, hey, yeah, maybe that's who God wants you to reach. Come on, in Jesus' name and love. You with me? Because their name is not, hey, they might be, come on, hallelujah. And here's number three of the, the neck, my, who is my, who is my neighbor? People that your kids play sports with. People that you go to work with. People that you work out with. People that you go to school with. Those are your neighbors. Will you answer the call? Those are just a few that God needs your help, everyone, to reach. And I pray that you will answer the call because you believe that we are connected to God's word to see people live their best life because loving God and loving people, that's the hot spot way, everyone. Loving God and loving people, that's the hot spot way. I mean, the hot spot way. This week, here's what we can do to, to help, you know, answer the call. You know, I want you to pray. Remember the Bible says Jesus, Jesus talked about, you know, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. I want you to pray for your neighbors. Maybe you have neighbors that you never, don't even know their names. You know, I'm talking about you, you're, you're, you're uh, around your, your own area. And I can't go out at social distance. Come on, man. You go out. You go out. Don't, don't, don't lie to me. You go out. Come on. Amen. And now you want to be all humble and thou with love and no one stay in it. No, go out it 
and go talk to your neighbors with a mask on. Come on, amen? But, but pray for your neighbors. That's what I want you to do this week. Pray. Pray for your neighbors. And I know you probably say, but well, what do I pray for? Man, instead of judging your neighbors, just say, God, whatever their needs are, uh, Lord, help them to, to, to be fulfilled. And if it's in my power to help them, then show it to me. You know, um, that's maybe some that's the thing that you need to pray for. Lord, give me that opportunity. What what should I, you know, why why you know maybe some of the questions is this, why should I pray for someone I don't know? Because of the love of God. Okay, that, that's going beyond just, you know, your remember the, the Bible what we just read? Uh why if you only should greet those what that you know, you know, what, what reward is that, right? If you're just gonna love those who love you back, what's the reward? Come on, we, we're going to have to get out of, we're going to get out of, out of this comfort zone in Jesus' name. Hallelujah, somebody. Now, so what, what, what does it do then, Andrew? What is that, all that praying does? It's a start. Because what it does is that you're investing in the call and also in your community. And by becoming that neighbor that Christ wants us to be, everyone, we become who we're supposed to be. And as a result, now our community, our neighbors become the place that God intended them to be. Well, how, Andrew, how will people know that we're, we're believers then? What is our identity? John chapter 13, 35 says, By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. Hotspot, today, make the choice to answer the call and fulfill the greatest commandment. Listen, don't look, don't let don't let this just be another lesson and say, oh, that was a good lesson, and then then that's it. No, answer the call. Okay? Answer the call because there's someone that's in need, and God needs your help to reach them. Okay? I believe the way if God wants to bless you, he's gonna use people. And if Satan wants to destroy you, he will also use people. But let me tell you, you need to answer the call to have this life and have life to the fullest. Okay, so fulfill the greatest commandment throughout 2021 and beyond. And I'm telling you right now, and watch the life that Jesus talks about comes to pass. That life more abundantly, life to the fullest, in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Thank you, Jesus. I'm done with today's lesson, and I pray that this week that you'll be aware of, Lord, where do I need to answer this call? Maybe if it's at your work when you go to work, man. Be you know be be sensitive. Maybe if you're eating at you know um, you know at what do you call it? like at lunch or something, and and you're looking at your your coworker that's coming. Maybe that coworker always gets on your nerves, and maybe the reason why they get on your nerve is not because of you, it's because maybe they're hurting. Maybe, maybe they're going through something and you have the answer. Answer the call. Answer the call. Come on. Go beyond just your comfort zone. Because God needs you. Would you answer the call? I'm telling you, maybe just, for, just praying for them. Maybe when they come in and say, hey man, do you mind if I pray with you? For you? And I know maybe for some of you, it might be hard because at your work, all you've been doing was cussing up a storm and you, and they don't even know you go to church, right? But I'm telling you, you can change all that just by saying, man, look, I, I, I mess up too, but man, can I pray for you? And you watch what God will do to their lives and through your life in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. It could be even a church member that needs your call. Thank you, Jesus. Well, Father, I thank you for today. I thank you for your word. Lord, as great as you are, it's kind of a, a mind-blowing when to hear that you do need help. It's not that you, you know, you could do it. You, you could use anything. But Lord, you need us to fulfill your vision, your purpose. And so as we're connected to your word, and our people say, what word is that? That Jesus said, I come to 
give you life and have life more abundantly. To see people live their best life. Father, I pray that 2021, that we are more aware of how to help people live their best life. The life that you want us to enjoy. The life that you want us to enjoy here on this earth before we go to heaven. So I thank you, Lord, that everyone that hears my voice, that's listening, and maybe going to re-watch this thing or maybe watch this later. I declare, Father, Lord, that they will answer the call and fulfill the greatest commandment in your word. To love the Lord your God with all your heart is to love our neighbor. So we thank you, Lord, for this word. And if you are here for the first time, if you want Christ in your life, can you repeat this prayer after me too? Say, Jesus, I'm a sinner and I can't save myself. But today, I'm answering the call. I want you to be the Lord and Savior of my life. Thank you for washing all of my sins away. Thank you for paying the price. I love you, Jesus. And I want you to be the Lord of my life for the rest of my life. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Well, Hot Spot, I hope you enjoyed today. And uh, those, if, you've, if you accepted Christ for your, the first time, man, heaven is yours. Now it's so important that you start renewing your mind. You know, that's one of the words, the year of re, is to renew your mind. Andrew, how do I renew my mind? It's through his word. Get into this word, you know, and if you need help walking into his words, let us know and we can give you some from some information and one of the things i encourage people for the first time is go go into the book of proverbs and start reading in proverbs you know where it talks about wisdom and so forth but and then then you can go into like in matthew but just just to gain some wisdom of who god is too and um so i thank you thank you so much hotspot church family thank you for tuning in thank you for um all your, you know your continuous prayer and your support and if anything, again, just a reminder, you know, um, if, if you want this, you know, the, the oil, it's free. I'm not, you know, we're not charging. We just wanted to, you know, um, it just symbolizes that it's the yoke destroying and burdens removing in Jesus' name. Amen. So thank uh, the team here, uh, Pastor Daphne, Davina, my, my wife, Miley. And, um, thank you again. And thank you, Zena, for walk in if you heard all that scraping that's um our our Zena, you know she wants to know if uh when are we going to get out of here and go to church you know in a building uh but love you guys thank you god bless and uh that every day our ministry is growing spiritual wise member wise prosperity in all areas of our lives wisdom and understanding wave in our years favor with you and with man healing deliverance restoration, super debt cancellation, compassion, highly favored on top and rising in Jesus name. And everyone say amen and amen. God bless you, hot spot. Go with God. And I know God will go with you in Jesus name. Amen. God bless.